Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for another Kaguya Summer Reaction, Season 3, Episode 2. So, last time was the season premiere. Is that what they call it? So, last time we had the season premiere, which uh, served as a really good reintroduction, I guess. You know, it's been a while since uh, Season 2. And um, this was a really good way to kind of recalibrate and just remind you this is, you know, where the characters are, this is the relationships between them. You could feasibly start watching the show from this point and at least have a pretty good idea of how all of the characters relate together or how the main characters relate together. Um, but of course, you'd be doing yourself a huge disservice by not watching the previous two seasons because they are great. But, you know, it does it does a really good job at just sort of getting you back into it. Yeah, so they pretty much did cover all of who I consider to be the main characters and the various ways that they relate to each other. But there were also a few other, you know, interesting little things I didn't notice until the until editing. Um, just, you know, cute little parts like Kagiya's calming gesture that she'd worked out last season, where it was, you know, the right hand onto the left cheek as a way to reset herself. She seems to have managed to take that to a much quicker gesture. At first I thought she was just like brushing hair aside or something, but then I realized that's actually, you know, the thing that they introduced last season, where, you know, obviously holding um, Shirogane's hand would have been quite flustering, so she needed a quick reset, um, and barely even visible, perceptible, but um, that was really cool, I like that. Um, other things like Love Detective, Chica, just like a single frame flash that again I didn't see until editing, I think, you know, these were very funny. The show is so good. Mm, what else? Oh yes, between last episode and this, I ended up re-watching some episodes from season two. One of them that I saw was like around the election, and during that they'd mentioned sort of all of the things that would be coming up in this next school year. So they said something like a school festival and a school trip. I think they also mentioned the sports festival, but that, you know, we had just at the end of last season. So presumably, I think we're going to be getting, you know, those are potential ways that this season could go. Dealing with this school festival, which I assume is distinct from the sports festival. Yeah, so I'm not sure how far we're going, but that's going to be interesting. But yeah, that said... The first episode was mainly just a reintroduction. Um, I didn't have like too much else to say on it, apart from it being, you know, just a bunch of fun. So let's just uh, get into episode two. So again, this is a full-length timer-based reaction, so you'll need to get your own uh, copy to sync up and watch along with me. I will try to include a timer and maybe a little bit of picture and sound sort of at the start and at various points to help you keep yourself in sync. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm watching on Crunchyroll and I'm starting the video right at the very beginning. This is the very first frame. I assume it goes straight into the OP. So here we go, Season 3, Episode 2, starting in 3, 2, 1, now. I gotta say, also, it may have felt like I was a bit lukewarm on the on the opening before, but part of that is just due to being more self-conscious when reacting. And I also had several more chances to watch and listen to this, um, both during editing and... Oh. Here's some things that I wanted to say. I really like all of these characters um, that we're getting to see in the opening. Hopefully that means we'll get to see them during the season. But like earlier it had the uh, those two sort of main characters from the, um, the, 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 the cheer squad that Ishigami had gotten uh, involved in. So I'm hoping we get to see more of that. Because he also mentioned um, one of them last episode when trying to um he was just trying to distract Chica and 
Yeah, when he was trying to distract Chica, you mentioned one. And I don't know whether he was just doing it. Because he knew that would distract Chico. <laughs> She's so serious. Yeah, they both feel like it. And they both do. Oh, wow. I guess that's the problem with them doing all this stuff. All they see is just someone else being being themselves and being ungrateful. They're overseers. Somehow I don't think it'll be that easy. Just based on the nature of the show, where they realize all the things about each other if they heap on the compliments. I mean, that's true. They never publicly say any of the good things. And they have said good things about each other. Just not within hearing range of the other. Hmm. <laughs> Ah. 
well, this this obviously worked. <laughs> what the? <laughs> that look, I love that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is cool. I'd been wondering whether we'd be seeing much more of um Osaragi, was it? You know his friend? I was going to say, why don't you get Fujiwara, but... Sensor robotic. <laughs> Ten years of dealing with a Osaragi. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't seen these guys before, have we? I don't think so. <laughs> wing wing. A crowd of lustful men. Did she send Hayasaka? I guess like always does so much. Tom so resoundingly.
Well, I mean, that was highly effective. She's so effective. Who knew you who knew we'd get some singing in this as well? <laughs> Diegetic too. Well, despite her misgivings, Ayasaka always going above and beyond. Immortal. <laughs> Real thoughts coming out there. I love the, uh, I would say some of the real hair leaked out there. I was going to say her uh, personality real sh really shifted. Oh, there was kind of like a hint at one whether there might even be a hint of actual feeling there.
or is it still just uh Is it just like a pride thing? Drama about the minor characters. Who are two part of? Well, I mean, I guess they've all sort of been continuing, but this one was a very, <laughs> very direct continuation. Kaguya in disguise, or, you know, disguise. Uh, these clothes. It always looks pretty cool. Except when she's angry. Okay, well, she is doing it as what she considers a disguise. <laughs> or I wonder if Hayasaka is just trying to push. Shit, did I say her name wrong before? Shinomiya. I wonder if Hayasaka is just trying to push Shinomiya into acting. <laughs> Just dying. <laughs> his rapping is anus. Yeah, I guess that would be a whole separate thing. I mean, Fujiwara did help her, uh, did help him improve his basic singing, I guess, but. <laughs> All right. This pain. <laughs>
<laughs> feeling well. Not because, not because of your rapping. I've got to practice my rapping. <laughs> Somewhere Fujiwara is just like uh, trembling. Oh, that's right. We didn't see a uh, an ending before. There's sort of elements of the first of the first season's ending. This Kagu with the the wings, that is. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <clears throat> that's really cute. It was um Shiragane who was you know, who had dozed off and was sort of daydreaming. Um or actual dreaming. And the first ED ended with um Shinomiya waking up. So that was really cute. So that was episode two. We had the three parts. Uh, Miyuki Shiragane wants to mediate. Kaguya wants to distract him. And Kaguya preemptively strikes. So yeah, all of the titles make sense. The first one the first one was about you know Shiragane obviously wanting a functional student council. And it's a bit difficult when two of the members are so openly hostile to each other. So... It made perfect sense that he wanted to try to. Sorry. It made perfect sense that he wanted to try to. Um, well, even if he couldn't fix it, he wanted to try to do some improvement or at least try to prevent it from getting worse. Um, so, yeah, that was him mediating. It was kind of interesting. I don't think that we're going to have them just, you know, being nice to each other necessarily. Um, but yeah, I wonder how they are going to interact sort of going forward, whether maybe there'll be some small, you know, changes or you can see them, you know, really struggling to try to do their best not to not to keep sniping at each other. But it really is better that they, um, you know, to try to get some of this out in the open because they obviously, well, I guess maybe it it might be more one-sided now that I think about it, but Ishigami does, you know, is able to see the good qualities of, of um, you know, but, wait, what did I say Ishigami? Because, you know, it might be a bit more one-sided, you know, than I, than I initially thought, or than I initially remembered, but Ishigami, <clears throat> but Ishigami does definitely know the good qualities of of you know you know but he certainly never said them to her face and you know that i think that did make her you know obviously think slightly differently of him the fact that he was able to say good things about her you know maybe she hasn't had enough time to really dwell on what his good qualities might be so you know she was caught <laughs> caught with no answers there but Having heard him say nice things about her might put her in a better frame of mind to actually try to think of, you know, and see some of Ishigami's better qualities. 
again, you know, whether, you know, whatever happens with their relationship, I think, you know, it'll be interesting just to see it, how it evolves and changes. And as I said, it was nice to just see um, Osaragi Kobachi again. So, I, you know, as a supporting character, I imagine she'll still be sprinkled in um, every now and again. Most likely, you know, in relation to sort of Eno's stories, or maybe those that focus on, you know, larger amounts of the school population. <clears throat> but I think the main parts of this uh, episode were the next two sections. So both Kaguya wants to distract him, and Kaguya preemptively strikes. And this one was, this one was quite interesting, because we did get to see. It was in a large part about the relationship between Kaguya and Hayasaka, I think. I mean, certainly there was a lot of other stuff going on there, and obviously Shiragane was there, present. But the whole thing behind it was... Yeah, I mean, I guess Hayasaka's always doing so many things for Kaguya. And I think, you know, Hayasaka obviously cares about Kaguya, but at some point it was certainly going to sting, especially when putting her in such situations um, which, you know, can sting her her pride or, you know, can be embarrassing and that sort of stuff. And Hayasaka will still do them, but, you know. You can imagine that, you know, Hayasaka obviously wants things for herself as well. Um, I mean... I guess that's, you know, to some extent, that's really both of them, isn't it? Both of them have different amounts of freedom, sort of, in what they do. I mean, you can hardly call, you know, Shinomiya as being free. We've seen that in the first, you know, in these first two seasons. How a lot of her pain, a lot of her pain is self-inflicted, yes. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, she also has her whole family, um dynamic and the way that she's you know these sort of other these other um, structures and restrictions and stuff that are sort of imposed on her by nature of who she is yeah so this whole thing really did um, do a lot for sort of exploring and developing that relationship there and I really like that I and I really like how that went, and I'll be interested to see how it, you know, continues to develop the way that they interact, and, you know, and the point about Hayasaka, who is, you know, obviously a skilled actor, and, you know, has certain thoughts which, you know, came out in this instance. But less seriously, we also got some callbacks to some previous stuff, mainly you know, Shiragane's singing ability, or lack thereof. Chika wasn't really in this episode at all, except um at the end, but even that little part was quite funny with her just coming in, you know, first enthusiastic and then seeing President and then connecting as the thought sort of ticked over, wait, President singing, ah, uh, instant PTSD, <laughs> and just deciding to leave. Oh, that was pretty funny. Oh yeah, and I went to read that part at the end, um, Hayasaka's message to him. I mean, I more or less got the gist, you didn't need to read the whole thing, but... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not feeling well, so I'll be leaving now. It's not because of your rapping, okay, I swear, but maybe you shouldn't rap like that in front of other people? Now, that's not to say that your rapping is that awful. How should I put it? You know how they say that medicine is the flip side of poison? The human body can only tolerate so much. <laughs> and then, as Shiragane says, I'm going to practice my rapping to somewhere off in the distance. Chika just feels like a chill. <laughs> Chika just feels like a chill and just pure dread. <laughs> but yep, that's it. Another great episode. And also the first time that we got to see the ending, which I'm also a really big fan of. As I said, I like the I like the similarity to the first season's ending. Um, except with the flip that this time uh Shiragane is the one who's being awoken from a from a daydream. Um, I think it's really cute. I like it. As well as just the general imagery and stuff. 
But yeah, enough babbling for now. So, what did you think of the episode? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. If you liked the reaction, then maybe click the like button. If you didn't, click the dislike button, although I don't actually know what happens to dislikes nowadays. Um, but yeah, anyway, great episode. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.